On the A2A Simulations forums, we offered a $50 gift certificate for the first person to answer the following question. What is the approximate speed increase in a P51D Mustang when the Merlin engine supercharger switches from low to high at 17,000 feet? And we give a hint that says the manifold pressure changes from 54 inches to 67 inches. The answer to the question is approximately zero. And I have this chart here, I just wanted to explain the answer so everybody understood. Here you have a chart showing the top speed of the, of the P51D Mustang. Here you have manifold pressure, horsepower, and true airspeed. Over here in the left you have altitude. We put this little model over here for effect. Now if you notice at sea level, at full throttle, we're producing 67 inches of manifold pressure, over 1600 horsepower, and about 370 plus miles per hour. As we gain an altitude, our power increases. The reason for this increase is we're going up into colder air where the engine can produce more power. The speed increase is due to the air being thinner and also the engine increasing more power in the colder air. At 10,000 feet, you'll notice things start to drop off. That is the critical altitude for our low supercharger. Critical altitude means the maximum altitude at which the engine is capable of producing its full power. Well, we're in a low speed supercharger, which is like uh, riding your bike in its low gear. It produces great power up to a certain speed. And uh, right here you can see at 10,000 feet, sorry, excuse me, 10,000 feet, the uh, manifold pressure starts to drift downward. And that's because the low speed supercharger just cannot keep up with the thinner air and the faster air speed. So our horsepower starts to drop off and we actually get a slight decrease in speed. The slight decrease, it's only slight because it's being offset by the continued benefits that we're getting from the thinner air. Now this is the, this is the answer to the question. We're at 17,000 feet. We have now switched from low to high. And notice what happens. We're on a low blower and we are at 17,000 feet. We're producing approximately 54 inches of manifold pressure. That's with uh, ram air on and uh, everything. When we switch to the high gear, we're now producing 67 inches, but we are producing the exact same power. That is the break-even point. This is the point right here at which the cost of running that supercharger at a very high speed is equal to the gains that we're getting from the increased manifold pressure. It's very interesting because you can see why an aircraft has a dual speed supercharger by looking at this chart. If you got rid of the low gear and just kept the very high cost high gear, you could travel, bring it all the way down there and you'd see the aircraft would have, would be producing much less power below 16,000 feet it's sort of like, again, riding your bicycle around in a, in a high gear at low speed. It makes no sense. So we have two speeds to our supercharger. So at this point, we switch to the higher gear. At that exact point, we're producing the same exact power than we were in our lower gear, but we are producing 67 inches. You think you're producing more power, but you're not. You're producing the same. Speed is not going to change. As you continue to go up in altitude, look at the high speed gear it has a lot more breathing room. So it can now maintain 67 all the way to 26,000 feet, which is our second critical altitude. At 26,000 feet, we have reached our maximum speed. We start to run out of breath and there you see the limit. Now you'll also notice, uh, for those who are familiar with the P47 with the turbocharger, it does not have this, this whole compromise. Uh, that you see with the dual speed superchargers. The, the turbocharger does not come with these high costs, which is why the P47 really gets into stride up high, because it's very little cost and it's producing a tremendous amount of power, and you get a nice, perfectly smooth line with the P47. But this is with the P51, and this is typical of any fighter with a dual speed uh, supercharger. In essence, when you switch that gear from low to high, you are essentially flying with a different engine. You need to treat it as if it's a different engine. And this is also uh, why they have it automatically switching at this particular speed. You can see why you would not want to switch into high gear when down low. You could get quite a, a large surge. And of course, you could damage your engine if, if you're not careful. 
uh, pilots like to back the throttle off, some pilots I should say, like to back the throttle off, switch their gear manually, and then uh, bring their throttle back in. It's not necessary. It will automatically adjust for the pressure differences. I hope this answers your question, and I hope now that when you hear the term dual-speed supercharger, you understand. Thank you. Bye-bye.